Oh, I have to tell you this. Last night I had such a ball. Now what does that mean? Does that mean I went and bought myself a basketball or maybe a volleyball or a tennis ball? Well, to find out, you'll just have to stay with me. Well, hello once again and welcome to yet another interesting and exciting lesson. My name is Rima and today I have for you different phrases from the English language which have the word ball in it. Now, normally all of us since childhood have played with balls, you know, be it cricket, be it baseball, be it basketball, tennis, volleyball, throw ball, whatever you want to play, there's always a ball and it's in different shapes and sizes. But today I have different phrases for you which actually use the word ball but basically have nothing to do with playing or sport. So, well, the first one coming right up. Now this one is have a ball. Now this one is pretty much my favorite. That's right. Because have a ball actually means to enjoy yourself. Or have a party. Now you could use this in a sentence by saying something like last night at the party I had a ball which means I thoroughly enjoyed myself at the party or you could use this in a sentence uh, by saying something like you know we all decided to have a ball which means we decided to enjoy ourselves or we decided to have a party. So that's how you could use the phrase have a ball. Moving on, I have for you get the ball rolling, which means get the process started. So if you have a plan or project that you've been wanting to execute or do for a long time, you should just get the ball rolling, which means you should get the process started. So that's how you would use this phrase in a sentence. And I hope you have looked at the next one because this one is quite complex. Okay, the meaning of it. The ball is in your court. This is a full sentence within itself and it actually means it's your turn for action. Now, if you have a business negotiation that's going on and the other party has put forward their terms and now it's your turn. So you can use this phrase in a sentence by saying, well, now the ball is in our court and we must decide how to take this forward, which means it's actually your turn to take action or to do something because the other person has already put forward their plans or ideas or terms. So that's the meaning of the ball is in your court. And the next one, a ballpark figure. And this one's fairly simple. It just means the approximate figure or number. Now let's say you're buying something, something huge like say a property or a house and you know you're probably asking someone can you give me a ballpark figure for this property which means can you give me the approximate figure or approximate value or approximate number for the price of this property. Yeah, so it could mean approximate figure, number or 
value. So, you know, you could use this in terms of property or, you know, also in terms of space, you know. If there is a large ground, you know, you could say something like, what is the ballpark figure of the number of people that, that can fit in this space, you know. So that means the approximate number of people who can actually be accommodated in that space. So that is what ballpark figure actually means. Moving on, let's play ball. Well, this sounds a lot of fun and actually it is. So let's play ball actually means let's compete. Now imagine you and your friend have, you know, played a bet on something, you know, related to sport or a game, you know. So it could be any game, but before starting the contest or the competition, you could just challenge your friend by saying, all right, dude, let's play ball, which means, all right, friend, let's compete. Let's find out who is the better of the two. So very simple, let's play ball actually means let's compete. The challenge is on. Moving on, okay, now this one kind of makes me laugh. It's slime ball, okay. Now all of us know what slime is, you know. It's that slimy, dirty, greasy thing, you know. Slime is basically dirt, you know which gets accumulated or anything generally. So slime ball does not have to do with a dirty ball. It actually is a negative, you know, adjective for a person, you know. So slime ball, if you're calling somebody a slime ball, it means that the person is not trustworthy. or has a bad character. So, you know, if you have encountered somebody, you know, who you find to be not trustworthy, untrustworthy, or somebody whose character is not the best, you know, and you are in the mood to be slightly rude, and you're quite angry, you could just say, Oh, you know, Anna's husband, he's such a slime ball, which means he is not to be trusted. So, yes, it's definitely not a compliment. You know, when you call somebody a slime ball, it's a hugely negative comment on the way they are as a person. Moving on, I have for you a different ball game. Yes, I know all of us are used to playing different games, you know, which involve balls like tennis or table tennis or, you know, football. But this actually means a different situation. So, you know, you could use this in a sentence by saying something like, well, running your own company, now that is a different ball game altogether, which means running your own company is a different situation altogether, you know. So whenever you're faced with a situation that's not familiar or is, you know, quite challenging, you could use this phrase and say, well, marriage, now that is a different ball game altogether. Of course, you will only say this when your marriage is a new marriage. As time passes, I hope for your sake that you have mastered the ball game. So that is the way you would use a different ball game. Now moving on, a ball of fire, which means someone who is very, very energetic, enthusiastic, Or lively so if you have a colleague or a friend who's always really lively you know up for a party very loud vivacious then you could just say oh you know Susan from my office 
she is like a ball of fire she's such a ball of fire which means she is so full of energy it's as if you know she's like this flame that just keeps dancing so that's how you would use a ball of fire then eye on the ball yes now this one's very very important especially if you're working because this one means focus so you know let's say you're working and you're getting many distracting phone calls possibly personal phone calls you know and your boss just passes by and in passing makes a comment saying hello eye on the ball which means hello focus focus on your work that's right so eye on the ball means keeping your eye on the ball or on the process or the thing that you're currently doing the task at hand so that's right the meaning of eye on the ball is focus and the last one is drop the ball which means falter or make a mistake So imagine that your boss gives you an instruction saying when it comes to this project we are relying on you so please be careful not to drop the ball which means please be careful not to make a mistake or not to falter or not actually get all of us into trouble because you are the person that we are relying on so dropping the ball means to falter or make a mistake so well these were the phrases which had the word ball in it but they had nothing to do with the world of sport they were actually different ways to express different things in the in the english language i hope you've really enjoyed this lesson and if you found it a bit tough make sure you keep practicing so you get very good with it If you want access to many more interesting videos such as this one, make sure you subscribe to our channel. And if you want to say something to me, write in the comment box below. I'll be sure to reply. So this is me Reema signing out saying thank you. Bye-bye and take care.